This is Art Kimball. Illinois State's basketball team made its debut this past season, the 1978-79 campaign under the direction of Bob Dallawald, and the Redbirds finished with a record of uh, 20 victories and uh, 10 losses on the campaign. We're going to skip around on this particular report and pick up some play-by-play highlights from various games throughout the season, not necessarily in the order of competition. The Redbirds did open the season against powerful Indiana State, a ball club that swept to the NCAA Final Four and wound up its regular campaign unbeaten, and wound up being ranked number one in the country in both the AP and the UPI polls. The Redbirds, perhaps at one stage against Indiana State, played their best basketball of the season. Let's pick up a segment of the action in the second half, as we called it, from Holman Civic Center in Terre Haute, Indiana. Yarborough uh, picked up the foul, his fourth, with about 18-10 to go in the ball game, and uh, is on the bench right now. Mays is playing with four. 53 to 40, so like Illinois State by seven. Here's Bob Heaton at 25 feet. In and out and back in again. It's good. Heaton on the outside. Put down the long-range bomb, a 25-foot jumper. 53 to 48. ISU's lead has been narrowed to five by the Sycamores. Across is Farina. Farina works it off to Ronnie Jones. Jones holding high with Nimchik on it. Here's Jones circling out of traffic as the Holman uh, Civic Center crowd starts to roar. He works it off now to Rick Farina. Farina with a right-handed dribble. Being crowded by Heaton. Looking for some help. He gets it off to Ronnie Jones. Here's Jones holding high. Being crowded by Nimchik. Nimchik riding with four personal fouls. Jones breaks away from Nimchik. Bounce pass on the baseline to Mays. Turn around jumper by Derek is good. Big, Great big job. field goal. Beautiful play. Mays came off the screen, popped in uh, the jumper at the left baseline, 10 to 12 footer to make it 55 to 48. Redbirds back to a seven point lead on the Mays silencer. Heaton behind the bird screen at long range. Dips in and out, no good. Rebound deflected by Farina. Off to Mays to Ronnie Jones. Jones has Nimchik to beat. Now it's Steve Reed breaking it back on defense, so the Birds set it up off to Mays, left baseline, shot is up and off, Galvin's rebound is good, Joe Galvin hits the follow-up, and Illinois State has moved to a 57-48 lead, a nine-point advantage for the Redbirds, with 10.33 to go in the basketball game. Down to the Sycamores, Larry Bird with Farina all over him, left side of the floor to Nimchik, Nimchik well out on the floor, right back to Heaton, Heaton at the free-throw line. Bounce pass off this time to Reed. Reed left corner to Nimchik. Nimchik makes the jumper, goes around Jones, slides the pass off to Bird, drives to the hoop, shot will not go, and Galvin with a rebound. Galvin got good position on Larry Bird. Bird missed an incredibly easy shot for him. An eight-foot jumper wouldn't go down. Illinois State with a basketball. Here's Ronnie Jones. Jones shifts gears to the left baseline. Off to Joe Galvin. Free throw line extended. Back to Ronnie Jones. Jones maintains the right-handed dribble. Circles out of traffic. Changes directions on Nimchik. Back to 15. Bullseye. Ronnie Jones pours in a 15-foot jump shot. He's had an eight-point second half. 24-point ball game. And it's 59-48. to 48. Redbirds on the lead by 11. And Indiana State wants a timeout. Timeout for the Sycamores with 9.49 to go. It's Illinois State 59. Indiana State 48. It was a season's opener for Illinois State, and the Birds played extremely well during that stretch. But, of course, Larry Bird always is a factor. Joe Galvin fouled out of that game with 7.25 to go, and the Birds sort of took charge down the home stretch. Steve Reed. Reed down to Larry Bird. Bird's short jump shot is good again. Larry Bird really goes to work when the chips are on the line. 74-73. Illinois State by a point. Farina to Derek Mays. Mays double team, triple team, far sideline. Off to Rick Farina with a minute and 44 seconds to go. To Ronnie Jones. Here's Jones out front. He's directing traffic since freshman Joe Richardson inside where he sets a tough screen. Back out front. Ronnie Jones with the basketball. Carl Nix is on him. To uh, Derek Mays in the right corner with a minute and a half to go. Illinois State 74. Indiana State 73. A minute and 27 seconds left to go. Off to Del Yarborough, well out on the floor. The ball is deflected, goes out of bounds, and double on to the Redbirds. And I'll tell you, Larry Bird was the man who dove after the loose basketball in front of the Sycamore bench. A great competitor, there's no question about it. Bird split across the floor, and the Redbirds have it three quarters of the way up the floor in their defensive zone. Near sideline, here is Farina to inbound. Rick gets the ball off to Derek Mays. Mays has a man to beat, feeds the pass off to Joe Richardson. Richardson can't finish race, so he sets it up out front to Farina. With a minute and 15 seconds. Off to Derek Mays. Illinois State sitting on a one-point lead at 74-73. And here is Bird reaching in on Del Yarborough. Foul is called against Larry Bird. That's two fouls on Bird, and Yarborough goes to the line in a big, big one-and-one free throw situation. Good ball handled by the Redbirds. Derek had what almost could have been a breakaway. He passed off to Joe Richardson, and Joe Richardson as a freshman kept his composure. He could have caught it and right. got in there with a wild shot and cost him, but he regained control of the ball, took it back out, and used up some more seconds. Free throw by Yarborough, no good. Rebound, Larry Bird. Dell missed the big one. Indiana State has the basketball. They trail it by one with a minute to go. Here is Reed. Reed brings it down to Bird. Bird's jumper on the baseline is good. And the basket's going to be awarded. Basket is good and a foul on Rick Farina. Indiana State has taken the lead. 
The Sycamores came on to win it 78-76 to in one of the season's real thrillers. A great ball game came up a bit later in the season, still in December, down in Bowling Green, Kentucky. Dave Nussbaumer's drive-in layup at the top of the free throw circle right down the lane in overtime gave ISU a 75-74 to overtime victory over the Hilltoppers. Let's pick up a segment of the play in Bowling Green late in the uh, contest against the Hilltoppers. ISU probably now will look even more so for the high percentage shot. Washington trying to move to McKay-Smith. Out front to Richardson. Richardson being crowded by Ray. Ray almost reaches in. Doesn't quite. Bounce pass off to Ronnie Jones. Jones dumps the pass to Yarbrough. Deflected out of bounds by Furbach. Good feed inside to Yarbrough. Yarbrough was free, but Greg Burbach got a hand on the basketball. ISU for the game now. 23 of 55, 418. Western Kentucky, 17 of 58, 293. Burge with 39 rebounds to 22 for Western Kentucky. ISU with 19 turnovers. Western Kentucky with 7 at this point. 5.37 to go in the ballgame. Illinois State by 9 at 57 to 48. With the basketball is McKay Smith. Smith goes into 17 feet looking for somebody to pass to. And he finally gets the pass off to Yarbrough. Stolen away. Picked off by Washington as the Hilltoppers control it. Down to Trumbo. Trumbo brings it down. Hounded out front by McKay Smith. He looks off on the baseline to Washington, slides the baseline, shoots and scores. The basket's going to count, and a foul on Ronnie Jones. Big move along the baseline by Jack Washington, and Ronnie Jones picks up the personal foul on Jones. That's foul number four. And now here, Farina and Galvin checking back in. It's 57 to 50. That's foul number four on Ronnie Jones. We're down to five minutes and 17 seconds to play. Richardson's going to leave, and McKay Smith is going to leave. As we're getting to nitty-gritty time in this ball game, to say the least. And uh, Mike Reese back in for Western Kentucky as Greg Burbach comes out at the free throw line. Will go Jack Washington, who has 10 points here tonight. Del Yarborough has 20 for the Redbirds and uh, 15 for uh, Derek Mays. 14 for Ron Jones. Free throw by Washington is on the iron. Rolls around and it drops through. One of those rims must really be dead up there. That ball is hung on the rim. 57 to 51. Illinois State by six. Derek Mays all the way to the hoop shot is deflected away. Rebound. Yarborough is good. Del Yarborough pulled it down. Howard the ball home for his 22nd point. 59 to 51. The Birds back to an eight point advantage. Mike Reese out front to Trey Trumbo. Trumbo right side to Greg Jackson. Jackson's pass intercepted. Taken away by Ronnie Jones on a great defensive play. Jones collides with Jackson. Jackson crawls on the floor, but the Redbirds retain possession with 450 to go. Here is Rick Farina. Farina to Ronnie Jones. Jones, jump shot is no good. Rebound. Taken away from Joe Galvin. Controlled over here by Washington. Washington on to Trumbo. Trumbo on the drive. He penetrates. Double pump. Shot is no good. Galvin with a great rebound on the defensive iron. ISU has controlled his game on the board. They lead it by just eight. It's 59 to 51 with four and a half minutes to go. One of the great games late in the season occurred down in Monroe, Louisiana, as the Redbirds took on Northeast Louisiana and uh, their superstar, Calvin Nutt. Northeast Louisiana was an MIT selection this year. The Redbirds eventually lost that ball game 80-72, to despite a 25-point explosion by a senior veteran, Derek Mays. Let's pick up a portion of the play-by-play early in the second half of what proved to be a nip-and-tuck struggle in Monroe, Louisiana. Holding high is Jamie Mayo. Mayo pass for Hall. ISU really applying some defensive pressure now. Mayo direct in traffic. Derek Mays moves out on him. Off to Pickett. Pickett left side to Dave Hall. Hall to Yarbrough. Yarbrough intercepts the pass. And we do mean that. Hall threw the ball right to Yarbrough. Here is the feed to Joe Galvin down the lane. And he scores off the Ronnie Jones assist. Joe Galvin crept down. ISU has outscored Northeast Louisiana 4-0 at the start of the second half. The Redbirds back within two with 38-36. to Jamie Mayo across. Lenny Fant not too happy with the way his ball club's playing right now. Calvin out on the left wing to Hall. Hall top of the circle. Long range jump shot. No good. Joe Galvin clutches the rebound. Joe with a great grab off the defensive iron. To Derek Mays. Mays brings it across against Mayo. On the right-hand dribble off to Rick Farina. Farina on the left wing. Looks inside. Galvin trying to roll on the baseline. They come to Del Yarbrough. Top of the circle to Ronnie Jones. Jones holding. Looks inside to Galvin. Off to Farina. Farina coming back right. Goes down the lane. Whistles the pass to Ronnie Jones. Fakes left. Has a 12-foot right hand. A jumper is good. Ronnie Jones drills it in. ISU has outscored Northeast Louisiana 6-0. It's a tie ball game. 6-0 start of the half. 38-38. Illinois State has rallied a tie. The Northeast Louisiana fans start to talk it up. Down over the 10 second line is Mayo. Mayo works it right now to Calvin Nat. Nat sails in. 16 foot jump shot. Hangs on the iron nose. The rebound. Rick Farina. Farina gets it off to Derek Mays. ISU looking for a go ahead bucket. Here's Mays down between the circles. Rick Farina left side of the floor. Mays top of the free throw circle with Jamie Mayo on him. Off to Farina behind the Jones screen. Gives the ball to Jones. And we have a foul on John Pickett of Northeast Louisiana. Foul number three on Pickett. Illinois State will inbound it. Uh, they're taking Dave Hall out. And back in the ballgame for Northeast Louisiana is Donald Wilson. 
I don't know what Bob Donowal told him at halftime, but I'll tell you one thing. Defensively, ISU is a lot more sticky. The inbound pass to Derek Mays. Mays tries to drive against Mayo. Goes in, pulls it up at 11. His jumper is no good. Mayo clouded him all the way and picked up the first no foul. Foul number two on Mr. Mayo. The one thing you have to do on the road, the thing ISU did at South Alabama the other night, was uh, keep that home crowd quiet. Play right with them. If it's possible, grab a lead. Northeast Louisiana not getting much momentum at the present time from their faithful timeout taken by the Indians. 17.33 to play. It's ISU 38, Northeast Louisiana 38. Swinging from that date in February, the 80-72 to 72 loss to Northeast Louisiana. Let's go back to snowy December as the Redbirds took on the University of Detroit Titans at Callahan Arena in the Motor City. Detroit wound up as an NCAA tournament entrant, and the ball club ranked in the top 20 the second half of the campaign. The Birds just couldn't keep up with the torrid shooting of Detroit in that particular contest, and finally lost 92-81 to 81, despite a great performance by Joe Galvin, who scored 33 points against Detroit. Let's pick up a couple of segments of action from the Detroit game in the second half. 58 to 41, ISU down 17, the Redbirds inbounded. Ronnie Jones to Derek Mays, of ISU trying to come up with a garrison comeback here at the University of Detroit. Ronnie Jones from Derek Mays, top of the circle, into Galvin, right hand hook by Joe, is up and in. Joe Galvin with his 14th and 15th points on the right hand hook. 58 to 43, ISU back within 15. They closed within 11 late in the first half before a late uh, first half spurt gave Detroit their big halftime lead at 19. Terry Durive, turnaround jump shot, he finally missed one. Ball deflected out of bounds by Earl Curitan. Well, Durod proved he was human that time, Rick. I'll tell you, the thing that amazed me about Durod, eight of ten shots in the first half, and all of them from the twilight zone. I don't think he got anywhere within 10, 15 feet no. of the basket. He was bombing them up there and getting nothing but net. 58 to 43, the lead to Detroit. Illinois State with the basketball. The Burrs have chipped four points off that Detroit halftime advantage. On the right wing, Derek Mays. Mays around Wilbur McCormick. Packs in against him. Fade away at 12 by Derek. It's good. Derek Mays got it out. 12-foot right-handed jump shot, and ISU has outscored Detroit 8-2 to two at the start of the second half. Back within 13 at 58 to 45. Jeff Whitlow on the right wing. Shallowed by Del Yarborough. Off to Terry Durod. Durod works to McCormick. McCormick cut off on the baseline. Comes to pass back. Ronnie Jones makes a great save. Gets it back into Rick Farina. Tremendous play on the baseline by uh, Ronnie Jones. Off to Derek Mays. And here's Derek up over the 10-second line against Wilbert McCormick, but he palmed the basketball. Derek came down quickly, palmed the ball, and uh, the Titans of Detroit do a little huddling out on the floor to make sure they know exactly uh, how they want to align against the ISU man-to-man. Redbird chipping away at the start of the second half. 17-54 for the ball game, 58-45, to a lead to Detroit. Wilbert McCormick over the 10-second line. They're going to take a timeout. The Titans ask for a timeout period. 17-50 to go in the ball game. Detroit by 13 over ISU at 58-45. Early in February, ISU played a three-game series in Hawaii. They beat uh, the top-ranked Division Three club in the country at the time, Chaminade, 82-67. to On a Friday night, lost against Larry Little's University of Hawaii ball club, 82-77, to but came roaring back on a Saturday night to uh, pick up a 71-62 to victory as Del Yarborough and Derek Mays led the way with 20 points apiece. Attendance here tonight, 3,339. Down is Loudon. Loudon looks to Bowman. They work to Wells. Wells pushed over Joe Galvin. Jumper is good. Tony Wells and Hawaii can do no wrong in the second half. They are now back within one. A 59-58 ball game. Nussbaumer across. 3.56 left. Nussbaumer well out on the floor as Mark Hackett hounds him. To Derek Mays. Mays at 14 feet. Doc pedals out of traffic. Gets the ball to Nussbaumer. Nussbaumer holding against Hackett. Hawaii not in the matching zone now. They've been in a straight-up man-to-man. A goodly portion of the second half. The feed to Yarborough from Farina for two. Pretty play. Del Yarborough off the Farina assist. Drove the baseline left to right to make it 61-58. ISU leads it by three. Well out on the floor is Thomas Loudon. Loudon looking to uh, Joe Frazier. Frazier rolls underneath. Eric Bowman trying to post up in front of Yarborough. To Hackett. Hackett off to Frazier. Frazier drifts to the baseline. Cut off by Galvin and Nussbaumer. Back out on the floor to Tony Wells. Wells to Hackett. Hackett on the right-handed dribble. To Loudon. Loudon drifts it right on the right-handed dribble. Tries to move inside at 13 feet. Can't do so. To Bowman, Hawaii now playing for the high percentage shot. Pass for Loudon, knocked out of bounds. Good defense by uh, Rick Farina. 3.08 to play. Illinois State by three at 61 to 58. Hawaii will set it in motion. They do so to Bowman. Bowman in the right corner with Yarborough on it. They look to Loudon. Pull up jumper by Bowman. No good. Out of rim. Rebound. Deflected off the chest of Nussbaumer. Picked off by Del Yarborough off the floor. To Farina. Farina gets the ball to Nussbaumer. Nussbaumer brings it up the near sideline, right in front of our broadcasting position. He double teamed. The pass is intercepted. Picked off by Frazier. Frazier roars it down. He's going to go the distance. Pull up jump shot. No good. Rebound. Deflected away on the inside. Still loose. Still loose. Hackett has it. He follows. He shoots. He misses. And Galvin pulls it down. Joe is wrapped up underneath. Ball still deflected loose. No whistle. Bowman takes a 14-foot jumper. It's short. And Derek Mays has the basketball. 
Hayes with 2.29 left. Knocked away from behind, and finally Loudon is called for the foul. Man, oh man, you talk about mayhem here in the Hawaiian Islands. The foul finally called on Thomas Loudon, an obvious hacking foul from behind. They are letting him play here tonight. There is no doubt about it. Loudon with a 19-point second half. Or a 19-point ball game, 17-point second half. At the free throw line is Derek Mays, down to our left. Derek on the ball game with uh, 18 points. One and one, big free throw. 61-58, Illinois State. 2.27 left. And we have to continually mention, because it's kind of a surprise to us, Ronnie Jones hasn't played at all in this ball game. Free throw is good by Derek Mays. We knew he wasn't going to start, but uh, he hasn't played a minute. 62-58, Redbirds by four. Second throw by Derek Mays is good. Derek, with ice water in his veins, hits two big ones. ISU played certainly one of the major games on their schedule in late December as they ventured to snow-covered Syracuse, New York, something like 31 inches of snow on the ground out in Syracuse. The birds took on the Syracuse Orangemen, nationally ranked all season long, an NCAA a regional entrant of this year, a nationally ranked ball club, and they contributed, did the Red Bird, to the Syracuse home floor winning streak at Manley Fieldhouse, the longest home court streak in the nation. ISU played pretty well against Syracuse, finally lost at 82-72, to but played the Orangemen very, very close until the game's final Final five minutes. Oh, for third place. Here, Syracuse by two, and uh, the Syracuse Orange men have possession. Marty Head against uh, Dale White. Syracuse took the timeout. Roosevelt Bowie has come back in the center. His shot over Galvin is no good. Joe Skies for the rebound. Taken away by Orr. Orr shoots and scores, and he was fouled in the play. Well, the problem ISU is getting into right now is they can't mass that defensive board. Particularly with Bowie in there. Bowie, Orr, and Shackleford all had size and are all excellent jumpers. And uh, the personal foul was uh, whistled against Joe Richardson on the inside. At the line is Orr trying to complete a three-point play. at 62 to 58. Orr's free throw is up at that. He's had a big night. Orr with 19 points for Syracuse. And uh, the Redbirds come down the floor quickly, trailing by a 63 to 58 margin, down five. In the middle to Galvin. Galvin shoots and scores off the assist from Ronnie Jones. Joe Galvin has had an 11 point second half, 24 points for Galvin at 63 to 60. The Redbirds back within three. Syracuse, Eddie Moss holding left side of the floor. He works it off to Lewis Orr. Orr being covered now by Joe Richardson. Del Yarborough on the bench riding with four fouls. Farina hasn't been in there in quite a while. Rick also is in foul trouble. Uh, he has three. Lewis Orr, left side of the floor. 8.22 to go. Off to Marty Head. Jumper over Ronnie Jones. No good. Rebound. Dale White, the freshman, rips it off the defensive iron. Mr. White is maturing in this ball game considerably. This kind of competition, you uh, battle to survive, and Dale White is playing well. He's down on the attack. He's looking. Gets the pass off to Joe Richardson, another freshman. Here is Joe well out on the floor. Puts the ball under his uh, left armpit. Holds it momentarily to Derek Mays. Down the lane. Derek pulls it up at 11. Shot will not go down. The rebound, Dale Shackle for Syracuse. Long lead pass. Great interception by Derek Mays. Mays picks it off against Eddie Moss. He drives down the right sideline. Birds trail it by three at 63-60. 7.49 to play. Galvin to Mays. Mays at 17. Jumper by Derek is no good. Shackleford with the rebound for Syracuse. The Orange men have the basketball with a three-point lead. 7.38 to go in the ballgame. And uh, Jim Beheim up wanting his ball club to really get some movement offensively. ISU and Syracuse locked in a whale of a ball game here at Manley Fieldhouse. To the baseline, Moss. Moss jump shot over Mays. No good on the iron. Rebound. Or no good. And rebound to Galvin. Louis Orr missed uh, a follow-up shot. Joe Galvin ripped it out of there, and now Derek Mays to Ron Jones. Syracuse by three with 7.14 to go. Art Kimball with you from Manley Fieldhouse on the campus of Syracuse University. With the basketball is White. Dale White to uh, Ronnie Jones. Jones left wing. Free throw line extended. In the middle of Mays. Mays shot blocked by uh, Bowie. Throws it out. Bowie slaps down the 12-foot jumper. Marty Head pulls it up at 11. Jumper on the iron. No good. Tipped up and in by Shackleford. One of the Redbirds' big wins came on the road at Lake Charles, Louisiana in January. ISU, after a somewhat lethargic performance for a goodly portion of the ball game, rallied to tie McNeese State and uh, send the game into overtime. Eventually, Bob Donawal's forces came out with a 78-73 to victory. Ron Jones leading the way with 27 points. Let's pick up uh, the action in that ball game late in the end of regulation time. The lineup of Dale White, McKay Smith, Ronnie Jones, Derek Mays, and Del Yarborough. Okay, the ball inbounded to Ron Jones. Clock starts to roll. Tied at 67-67. 32 seconds left. Here's Ron Jones out front. Jones tries to penetrate. Looks off to McKay Smith with 26 seconds left. To Derek Mays. Mays circles out of traffic. The Birds want the sure shot or take this thing to overtime. We're down to 20 seconds. 
tied at 67-67. Here's Ryan Jones on the left-handed dribble. Jones off to Derek Mays with 14 seconds. They don't want to shoot too quickly. Down to 12 seconds. Derek Mays with 10 seconds. To Ronnie Jones with 8. Now he looks at the clock with 7 seconds. Jones is up top of the circle. Off to Derek Mays. Launches a 22-footer. It's no good on the air. Rebound Ronnie Jones. Turn around jumper is deflected. And we're in overtime. We're in overtime here in Lake Charles, Louisiana. Ronnie Jones was knocked on the floor. Thought he was fouled, but we're going to have an overtime ball game. At the end of regulation, with a timeout on the floor, it's McNeese 67, Illinois State 67. ISU, as we say, came on to win that ball game in overtime 78-73. to The biggest home crowd of the season appeared for the ISU-DePaul game later in the campaign at uh, Horton Fieldhouse. The Blue Demons, who made the NCAA Final Four, proved to be simply too much for an ISU ball club that went without Del Yarborough. Yarborough had suffered a broken hand and a victory at Evansville a couple of games prior to the DePaul meeting. The Blue Demons dominated. ISU made a little run in the second half, but never really could close the gap on Ray Myers' quintet. Aguire, Aguire leans in, shot over Anthony Jones, no good. Aguire rebounds it and misses it. And on the rebound, it looks like Galvin picked up the foul against Mark Aguire. Aguirre has that ability to keep the ball alive on the offensive board, and uh, the foul did go to Joe Galvin, his second. Real quick jumper. While everybody else is getting ready to jump, he's already jumped, and that's what allows him to, or in that particular case, get that rebound. I'm sure he does that to everybody. Aguirre shooting two. First one is good. Aguirre nets the first one, 12 points for Mark Aguirre, 49-30. to 30. Redbirds unable to really dent this DePaul lead. Second throw by Aguirre is good. He hits on a pair. So DePaul, at the start of the second half, has outscored ISU 5-2. Farina into Derek Mays. It's 50-30. The Blue Demons with a 20-point advantage over the Redbirds at Horton Fieldhouse. ISU's 30-game home court winning streak very, very much in jeopardy. Farina to Ronnie Jones. Off to Derek Mays. Mays looking inside to Anthony Jones. Right back to Rick Farina. 17 jumper by Rick is good. 17-foot right-handed jump shot. Five points for Farina. 50-32. DePaul, of course, taking its time. They've got the king-size lead. They can dictate play right now. Here is Clyde Bradshaw against Derek Mays. Mays, right side line, hash mark. Whirls inside of Derek Mays. Goes down the lane. Cut off by Galvin. Underhands to the glass. Shot misfires, and Galvin grabs the rebound. He's on the outlet pass to Farina. Down the floor to Derek Mays. Mays has a beautiful reverse layup move. Mays tumbles to the floor. The ball does not go down. We have a foul on Clyde Bradshaw of DePaul. His second. Good recovery by Derek. The ball almost was thrown out of bounds. He was open for a few seconds actually before they passed it to him, and he had to come up with a great effort to even catch the ball, and then he was able to get off a good shot and get fouled. Ronnie Jones to... Walls Ball Club. Let's backpedal now to the very early stages of the season. As you know, ISU opened losing narrowly to powerful Indiana State 78-76. to Their second game was at Horton Fieldhouse before a big crowd and the Redbirds were taking on longtime foe Southern Illinois, the Salukis, in their first year under uh, coach Joe Gottfried. It turned out to be a thriller. The Redbirds built up a big early lead, but the Salukis came charging back, and let's turn to action down the home stretch in that one. The thing you've got to fear, of course, is the three-point play, and the way they've been able to get the ball into Wilson on the inside. Um, actually, Milton Huggins has led the comeback drive for the Salukis. He's had uh, 10, 13, 15 points in the second half, 23 on the ball game. Redbird lineup, Jones, McKay Smith, Mays, Galvin, and Yarborough. For the Salukis, Huggins, Al Grant, and Gary Wilson up front with Abrams at one guard and Barry Smith at the other. Play resumes. 18 seconds left. ISU leading by two. Here is Abrams. The slam dunk. An alley-oop pass to Wilson. They got the slam dunk in his tie. Nine seconds to go. 86-86. Down to seven seconds. Derek Mays from the corner. Long jumper. No good. We got a foul on Wayne Abrams. Abrams committed the personal foul as Mays got off the jump shot. And Joe Godfrey, talking to the official... The foul is on Abrams, and I believe that's his fifth. Wayne Abrams has fouled out. Well, again, if it's a two-shot foul, it's pivotal. There's only four seconds left. Abrams has fouled out with four seconds to go in regulation time. The game is tied at 86-86. Southern got a spectacular basket. Right, and that's an unusual one to have a team pull on you, uh, that alley you pass, because there's so many things, so many variables that have to go right for you to get that to go. Okay, Rick, Derek Mays is at the line. ISU has Del Yarborough back defensively along with McKay Smith. See what the indication is, one and one or two shot. Two shot violation. First one by Derek is no good. He missed it. In and out. One more throw to Derek Mays. 86-86. Four seconds to go in the ball game. Second throw is good. Rolled around and fell through. ISU by one. Southern long pass. The ball hit the scoreboard. The ball hit the scoreboard on the out-of-bounds pass by Gary Wilson. Karen out-of-bounds. The Redbirds are going to have it with four seconds left, and ISU is going to take a timeout. 
That gives us a chance to take our breath a little bit. Mays missed the first free throw. He made the second to give the Birds an 87-86 lead. Southern Illinois was going for the length of the floor pass with four seconds left, obviously. The ball hit the scoreboard on Gary Wilson's throwing from out of bounds, and ISU has it, so... Rick, I guess now you do all in your power to prevent the interception on the inbounds pass. Right, that's right. It has to be a good pass here, and they'll be very conscious of who takes the ball out of bounds here. You need a good pass, and people have to move. You can't get everybody standing around waiting for somebody else to do to uh, make a move. Otherwise, you'll turn the ball back over again. Uh, that pass by Wilson had a chance. He got it up awful high, but it was going to come down, I think, inside of the uh, inside of the, the out-of-bounds line, and then you would have had a scramble for the ball up in the air and possibly a foul on somebody. somebody. So it's a good thing. I've never seen a guy hit the scoreboard with an out-of-bounds pass in the years that I've been here, and it couldn't happen at a better time. Been a wild ball game. Redbirds had a 16-point lead. We're going to estimate to say three times in the second half, but at least twice. And now they lead 87-86 on a free throw by Derek May. Two clubs that pride themselves on their defensive skills have really lit up the scoreboard out here as we're approaching an NBA tally in this one. 87-86. Don't forget uh, 15 minutes following the conclusion of the ball game, our Bob Donawall show. It's a wild one. The Redbirds will inbound it and have it at the end of the floor under their own attacking basket. Derek Mays missed the first free throw. Of course, Derek is usually extremely reliable. He was two out of two at Indiana State. Okay, I ask you to inbound it. Oh, and the timeout's going to be taken. McKay Smith, very wisely, could not find an open man and call the timeout. Now, Joe Gottfried is arguing they didn't get the ball in in time, but uh, McKay Smith used his head there, Rick. There's no question about it. And called the timeout. He couldn't get the inbound pass. Good defensive job by everybody on Southern's team that time. They knew when you take the ball out of bounds, you're going to have picks coming at you from all angles, and you have to be ready to switch off. There's only That's the only way to defend that is be, sure, be ready to switch off on everybody who comes over to pick on you. They did all that. McKay read the situation right and uh, called a timeout. So now we'll just take a few minutes here, and they'll come back out and be in the same situation. You know, one trouble Bobby Knight's clubs always had at Indiana was making that inbound pass. Remember when Jimmy Cruz used to have to be substituted many times by Bobby Knight, the kid from New High at Normal, to uh, get the ball inbounds? And that may be one weakness uh, of all the things that Bob Donawald has inherited from Bobby yeah. Knight and uh, working with him. But the inbound pass, of course, uh, can get you beat in a ball game like this. And uh, thank goodness McKay Smith called the time out of the Saluki to have a last shot at it. That's right. And also, uh, what I, as you did that time, everybody made one move and stopped. Then they looked around at each other, and McKay did read it right and uh, called the time out. So after you make that initial move, if you're not open then, you got to make another move and another until you eventually get shake yourself loose. And again, the Birds are playing their second game of the year. This is game number six for Southern. Okay, here's McKay Smith. Smith into Galvin. Galvin, right corner. Al Grant's all over him. Foul on Al Grant with a second left. So Galvin will be at the line. Joe Galvin at the line. That's the third foul on Al Grant. So let's set the situation for you. One second to go in the ballgame. Illinois State, 87. Southern Illinois, 86. Joe Galvin in a one-in-one -one situation. He could make life easier on Bob Donawald and everybody else uh, rooting for ISU here tonight by making them both. Free throw by Galvin is good. Joe got the first one. So the Redbirds now have a two-point lead. 88 to 86. One more throw coming to Joe Galvin. Joe bounces the ball several times. Eyes the bucket. Deep breath. Second throw. Galvin is good, and that should clinch it. A big win for the Redbirds. 89-86 over Southern Illinois Salukis. One of the highlights of the season came just prior to Christmas as the Redbirds won the first ever ISU Holiday Festival basketball tournament, defeating Northern Illinois and Ole Miss to claim the title. The other entrance uh, in the tournament, of course, uh, Loyola of Chicago's Ramblers, who lost to Mississippi in first-round play. Illinois State defeated Northern Illinois 71-60 to in their first test in the tournament. Del Yarborough, a Northern Illinois tormentor of long standing, poured in 28 points and had 20 rebounds in a spectacular performance. Here's a segment early in that ball game with Northern Illinois and the Holiday Festival. It wasn't easy in the early going for the Redbirds. Hey, hey, that's the ball back into Yarborough. Off to Derek Mays, and Mays comes to the 10-second line. Derek brings it across on the left-hand dribble. Off to Farina. Farina to Ronnie Jones. Jones traveled with the basketball. Jones took a little extra step. He was cutting from his left to his right. Free throw line extended to the free throw lane area. Walked with the ball, and Northern Illinois will inbound it. ISU had a chance to take the lead and turned it over. Ray Clark, the freshman guard. St. Joseph High School in Westchester. Team with Isaiah Thomas, who's still up there at uh, St. Joseph this year. One of the state's really fine backcourt tandems last year in prep life. To Dawkins underneath. He's all alone for two. Dawkins shook free, got away from Ronnie Jones, and that's his 12th point, all on field goals. 16-14, Northern leads. That was a layup for Mr. Dawkins. Two-point lead to the Huskies. Farina to Yarborough to Galvin. Galvin to the hoop for two. Joe Galvin on the inside. 
his first bucket. Joe has been open pretty much all night long, Rick. I would think we'll see him going to Galvin and Yarborough pretty consistent. Right, both of them are open, and they have mismatches from a size standpoint, especially Joe, and they should go to him. There's a collision. Mays was involved in it as he ran into John Harris, a backdoor pick by Harris, and Derek Mays picks up his second personal foul. Of course, the Redbirds have had uh, problems with the personal foul all season long. Bob Donawal show after this ball game, then the second game tonight, Loyola and Ole Miss right here on WJBC. We invite you to stick with us. Well, out on the floor is Clark. Clark off now, left side to a Sean Thrower. Thrower holds the basketball high to McHouston. In the middle to Dawkins. Dawkins jumper at the free throw line. No good. Rebound batted way away out front. McHouston retrieves it, and it's still in play. It was batted back there by the Redbirds. He gets it off to Ray Clark. Clark brings the ball up over the 10-second line. He was a quarter of the way in his defensive zone after the ball was batted back there. Dawkins holding. Comes out front quickly to the thrower. Thrower to Clark. Clark gets the ball inside to Dawkins. Turn around jumper. Hangs on the iron. No good. Rebound Ronnie Jones. Jones Sky, six foot five inch junior from Venice, Illinois. High school performer at Madison. Jones on the drive, pulls it up at 14 on the move. His shot will not go down. Rebound control by Sean Thrower in front of Del Yarborough. Had better rebounding position. And Northern Illinois is going to take a timeout. First time out of the ball game, called this time by John McDougal. 8.25 for the half. It's Northern Illinois 16, Illinois State 16. The championship game of the ISU Holiday Festival turned out to be a classic matchup. The Redbirds won it 76-72 to over Bob Weltlick's ball club. And, of course, Weltlick and ISU coach Bob Donawal served together on the Indiana staff. The game was almost a clinic. Identical motion offenses, identical man-to-man defenses for the most part. It proved to be a great basketball game throughout. Throw by Derek is good. Free throw accuracy is mandatory, vital at this point. Illinois State by three, 67-64. One more throw to senior veteran Derek Mays. Second throw by Derek is good. He nets a pair. Mays makes it 68-64 Redbirds. Sean Tui to the 10-second line very slowly for Mississippi with 3.58 to go. He drives to the right side of the floor looking for Stroud, playing in behind uh, Ronnie Jones, out front to Malcolm. Malcolm almost traveled. Turns off uh, the pass, now gets it back to Tui on the right wing. Against Derek Mays, pass intercepted. Tui's pass intercepted by Ron Jones. Here is Jones bringing the ball up. Malcolm digs in defensively for Ole Miss. Stanley Malcolm, Ronnie Jones backing in. ISU leads it by four with 3.35 to play. Derek Mays from 17 feet. Long jump shot, no good. Rebound comes long to Tui. Tui down over the timeline for Mississippi. Left side of the floor to Turner. Turner launches the 20-footer. Hangs on the iron. No good. The rebound taken by Ronnie Jones. Both ball clubs with lousy percentage shots there. Mays took one he shouldn't have taken. So did Turner. And ISU comes back with the basketball with 3.15 to go. Dale White breaks left. Here's Ron Jones. Jones looking for a cutter. Throws it out of bounds. Dale White went one way. The pass went the other way. Ron Jones uh, tried to get the ball to Dale White. And uh, that freshman inexperience, of course, hurt a little bit there. But on the other hand... Uh, well, I guess you can't really blame anybody. White went the wrong way. Jones threw a pretty good pass. There wasn't anybody there. Henry Jackson has come in for Mississippi. He has replaced uh, Tui in the lineup, and he's teaming with Malcolm at the guard. Stroud's turnaround jump shot is good at 13 feet. John Stroud, a slick junior forward. Surpassed the 1,000-point mark in scoring in his career at Mississippi here tonight. 68-66, to 66, Illinois State by two with 2.46 to go. McKay Smith, Burrs need that high percentage shot right now. McKay Smith off to Dale White. White on the left-handed dribble. He's being covered by Kim Benson. Benson at 6'9", still out on the 6'5-inch White. Off to McKay Smith, 2.33 to play. Illinois State leading by just two. Dale White on the left wing. White trying to come out of traffic. Back to McKay Smith. Clears it off to Ronnie Jones. He's going to take the 16-foot jump shot, and he scores. Ronnie Jones, the ice man, tags another one on to make it 70-66. to Illinois State leading by four. 2.15. Calm as could be. Jones drills it in. Henry Jackson, left baseline. Comes cross court to Stanley Malcolm. Malcolm travels with the basketball. ISU will have it. 25 points for Ron Jones so far in the ball game. Ron with 25, and now uh, Chris Barrett is going to come back in, replacing Stanley Malcolm in the Mississippi lineup. Malcolm checks out, and uh, Barrett checks back in. ISU with 14 turnovers. Ole Miss with 22. 2.04 to go. Redbirds by four. 70 to 66. Championship game, ISU Holiday Festival. McKay Smith works it off to Ron Jones. Jones being crowded by Barrett. Now he drives it right. Inside the hash mark, right sideline. Circles out front against Barrett with a minute and 50 to play in the ball game. To Del Yarborough. Back to Ronnie Jones. They're letting Jones take charge. He gets the ball off to Dale White. White, the freshman from Covington, Indiana. Circles the left side of the floor. Goes down the lane. Tries the jumper and scores! Dale White! Got the field goal. Let's see if the basket's going to count. The basket is good. He was called for the charge after the field goal. Uh, he looked great that time. Very experienced. Good move. Only thing about it, he picked up the charge. He had 
if had he just stopped and gone straight up that same 5, 10 foot jump shot but as he made his penetration move he continued to fly through the air and picked up the charge but the basket is the most important thing though White's going to be a fine player, there's no question about it he lacks experience right now, there's no question about his shooting ability and uh, goodness knows he's had to play in pressure situations, he's playing right. point guard at Western Kentucky Monday night Rick well he's big enough to be able to do an awful lot of things he's 6'5", he ball handles pretty well and his shooting speaks for itself so he's going to have a real good future here at Illinois State ISU went on to win that ball game over Ole Miss, 76 to 72. The Redbirds winning their own ISU Holiday Festival. ISU had two very serious contenders for the most outstanding player award in that tournament, and Del Yarborough and Ronnie Jones. Jones in the championship contest wound up with a total of 29 points. However, the uh, writers and broadcasters covering the tournament selected Northern Illinois' uh, great ball player Paul Dawkins as the tourney's most outstanding performer. Anytime Illinois State meets Bradley, the fur is bound to fly, and fly it did at Horton Fieldhouse as they met early in January, but ISU continued its dominance over the Braves. Here's a portion of the play-by-play -play report late in the contest. Throw lane to Farina, back to McKay Smith. Smith at the baseline to Derek Mays. Mays holding it against James Copeland on the floor now for Bradley. They've got as much quickness out there as they can muster. To Rick Farina. Farina holds high against the double team. Down low to Mays. Mays has the uncontested 10-foot jumper and can't get it down. And McMath with another rebound. He throws it out of bounds on the outlet pass. Harold McMath cleared it brilliantly, but rifled the ball down the floor, threw it out of bounds. 241 left. Illinois State in possession. Dick Versace up in front of the scorer's table, telling his boys to cool it just a little bit. Boy, McMath has been impressive as a rebounder on the defensive iron tonight. Here's Farina to Derek Mays. Mays stops on the left wing. Free throw line extended down the lane to McKay Smith. Pulls it up, shoots and scores. See if the basket's going to count. The foul is on Mitchell Anderson. Big play by McKay Smith. Yeah, the basket would, is good. I would think that that would happen pretty soon. I, Derek got a good shot last time down. McKay penetrated real well and got a good basket. Uh, Bradley is triple teaming the ball out here in the corners. That makes it that you have about a four-on-one situation once you get it out of that, that uh triple team and you should be able to get an easy shot like McKay did. 2.31 to go 64-56 ISU and Smith nets the uh, free throw. Three point play by McKay Smith. Couldn't come at a more important time ISU by 9. 65-56 Rick Malnati for Bradley to Maniscalco. Maniscalco back to Malnati left baseline. Back to Carl Maniscalco lost the ball on the drive little Carl Maniscalco got himself out of control just uh, momentarily there and uh, lost the ball on the baseline Bradley full court pressure of course Farina inbounds to Del Yarborough Here's Dell in the defensive zone, the big guy dribbling, looking for a little bit of help to Farina. Two minutes and 13 seconds to go. ISU 65, Bradley 56. Farina checked off from behind, clears it off to McKay Smith, right back to Rick Farina. Farina in the middle to Yarborough. Yarborough turns, shoots, and misses, and the foul on Mitchell Anderson will put Yarborough at the line. Right, Rick, Bra they're following your strategy, Rick. They're trying to go to the postman inside. That's right, and Bradley's having, having to use the pressure defense out here, and they're at a point now where they have to gamble. They haven't been able to steal the ball, and as a result, Illinois State's been able to get off some pretty good shots or get fouled, and ISU's handling the pressure defense pretty good once they get the ball across the 10-second line. Ten points for Yarborough, one and one for Dell at the line. ISU leads it by nine with two minutes and five seconds to go. Free throw by Dell is good. Ten-point edge. Been a tough one for ISU. Bird showing a lot of poise down the stretch. They lead by ten, 66-56 over Bradley. One more throw to Dell Yarborough, the big guy from North Chicago. Shot hangs on the outer rim. Tipped by McKay Smith out to Ronnie Jones. Jones clears it. ISU retains possession with two minutes to go. Mays to Farina. Farina to Ronnie Jones. Jones underneath the Mays. Mays is hammered from behind by James Copeland. This will put Mays at the line. The foul on James Copeland, his first. Very good pass by Ron Jones. Derek flashed open. Ryan went up in the air, recognized the situation, and got the ball to him. Derek could get a chance for some free throws. Derek Mays at the line, and he wants Versace off the sideline. Versace is shouting at his ball club out in front of the ISU bench. Free throw by Mays is good. He'll take the bonus. Nine points in the second half for uh, Derek Mays. 25 for the ball game for Derek. 67-56, 68-56. They made a pair. That was a big win, of course. Anytime Illinois State plays Bradley, it's a big basketball game. And ISU, as we said, uh, continued its dominance over the Braves with that triumph at uh, Horton Fieldhouse, 74-61. to Later in the campaign, Illinois State made a very snowy trip to Valparaiso, Indiana, to take on the Valpo Crusaders in their relatively small gymnasium. Ron Jones had a 30-point performance to pace ISU to victory. ISU pulled away late in the game's first half. Eric Mays to uh, Rick Farina. Farina holding the basketball well out on the floor to Anthony Jones. Jones works it. 
Free to bounce pass to Galvin. Galvin, Anthony Jones for the solo drive, and he scores. Pretty backdoor play. Seven points for Anthony Jones off the assist from Joe Galvin as ISU worked the ball low, used some patience, set Anthony Jones along the baseline for the bucket. 37 to 27. Redbird duplicate their biggest lead of 10 points. And we have a little hand checking from Ronnie Jones, and as a result, Jones draws the personal foul, his second. Ron with a total of 20 points. His career high is 34 last year against Nevada Las Vegas. So Jones well on the way to uh, perhaps erasing that career high of his. He had 32 points at Indiana State in the season's opener. And uh, that's his season's high this year. He had 29 against Mississippi in the championship game of the holiday festival. And 27 on a couple of occasions. The free throw is good by Greg Don. Dobbs makes the first one. He'll get the bonus throw. But Jones is off and running with a real big night already with 20. And we still have 4.32 to go in the first half. 37 to 28. Redbird lead narrow to 9. Make it 8. And Don That's the uh, second free throw. Valparaiso has missed only three free throws thus far. ISU has had only uh, five attempts. They made the ball. 37 to 29. Redbird's inbounded. Front line, Anthony Jones, Joe Galvin, and Ron Jones. Ron definitely playing a forward now. Is on the wing is Rick Farina. Here is uh, Derek Mays making the pass left to Ron Jones. Take coming off to Rick Farina. Farina dribbles one step right. Right back to Derek Mays. Launches the 17. Butter, it's good. Derek Mays, under a lot of pressure, got down his third field goal, his eighth point of the evening, 39 to 29. Illinois State leads it by 10. Greg Dobbs in the defensive zone against Ronnie Jones. He comes one off the floor to Ken Pollock. Pollock left side to Nolan Pettis. Pettis now clearing off to Jeff Markle against the Redbird man to man. Markle being covered by Derek Mays. Four minutes and counting in the basketball game's first half. Nolan Pettis well on the floor. Works off to Pollock. Pollock holding high to Greg Dobbs for Valparaiso. Right side of the floor to Simmons. Jeff Simmons clears to a pilot. Had a little trouble penetrating against the ISU man-to-man defense, which right now is very, very sticky indeed. In fact, the Redbirds looking for the steal. Jeff Simmons holding the ball left. He lost his dribble, passed down the lane, intercepted by Rick Farina. ISU collapsed very, very nicely. Farina brings the ball up over the time stripe. In the left corner to Ronnie Jones. Looks low to Anthony Jones. Off to Galvin all alone. He scores. Joe Galvin with a four-footer off a spectacular assist from Ronnie Jones. And it's 41-29. to The Redbirds lead Valparaiso by 12. An interesting uh, contest at uh, Horton Fieldhouse. Pitted the birds against Howard University out of Washington, D.C., and ISU really put things together that night. They scored 88 points and down Howard 88 to 62, and the fast break bucket, of course, was a big story in that one. Dale White to uh, Derek Mays. Mays picked up by Jeff Beard. Circles left side of the floor, has White behind him, comes to Ronnie Jones down low. Back to Mays. Mays top of the circle into 17 feet. Shot rolls good. Derek Mays, soft cut, had the ball up on the outer rim. He got it to take legs for him and roll home, and ISU now leads it by 17 at 49 to 32. Jeff Beard's pass, intercepted by Ronnie Jones. To Derek Mays, two on one. Behind the back pass, Mays to Jones, to Mays, to Jones. Spectacular play. Spectacular play. Derek Mays got the bucket. Ronnie Jones took a behind-the-back pass from Mays, rifled it back to Derek in the two-on-one break. Derek rolled in for the score. Timeout, Howard, 14.44 to go. It's ISU 51, Howard 32. And there you have some of the sound, some of the fury, some of the excitement from the 1978-79 ISU basketball season. Bob Donawal's first year as Redbird skipper. Illinois State finished with 20 wins and 10 losses. Just barely failed to get a postseason NIT bid. But during the season, played seven teams that were entrants at either the NCAA or the NIT. They played two ball clubs, Indiana State and DePaul, both rugged members of the NCAA Final Four. For WJBC Sports, Art Kimball reporting.